Hi folks, Smudge here and welcome to Mastering in the Box, your home for simple guidance on digital mastering and digital audio. Today's video is going to be a little bit different in the fact that I'm going to show you how you can get your audio from your digital audio workstation of choice showing into OBS so you can record videos and share it as you see fit. Now if you've got loopback in your audio interface then this may not apply but I'll tell you what, my interface, my trusty Zengo Synergy Core Antelope Audio interface has gone in for some repairs, so I've had to use an old spare Behringer interface that I've had lying around. And it doesn't have loopback, and it's been a bit of a frustration to get set up. So what I want to do is show you how you can get your system working so you can play back your audio from your DAW into OBS, so you can use it for streaming, recording, or whatever you see fit. So there are a couple of pieces of software that you will need to install to get this working and I'm going to show you those now. Obviously you're going to need your DAW of choice and I'm going to show you how to do this inside of Reaper and inside of Studio 1.5 but you obviously will need OBS and you can get that through OBS Studio so if you Google OBS Studio then you make sure you download that for your operating software of choice. But the additional pieces of software that you will need are VB Audio Cable, and this is available from vb-audio.com. And it's a free piece of software, you can download it here, and it's available for Windows and Mac. But I would recommend you actually download this one here, it's the VB Audio Cable, Cables A and B. Now this is donation software, so, you know, you will have to pay a little bit of money, but look, you can donate from five euros or five US dollars. It is that cheap. And I'm going to recommend you donate because if we don't keep supporting these companies, then they won't be able to continue making these pieces of software and updating the software for our use. So I'd recommend if you can, then donate just towards the cause, even if it is just five euros or five dollars. So we're gonna need VB audio cable and I would recommend VB cable A and B. Now the next piece of software you're gonna need is audio monitor. Now you may not need this, it depends what you're trying to do. But this is once again, it's a free add-on for OBS Studio. And this is available from the obsproject.com. And if you Google OBS Audio Monitor, it's the first entry and download this as an extension for OBS. And what this is gonna allow you to do is to monitor any feed that you get into OBS. Now, sometimes you don't need it, and I'm gonna show you the setup where you don't need it. I'm not gonna go into the full ins and outs of OBS, I just wanna keep this nice and simple. But this is recommended if you start adding lots of different sources from different places, and you can't monitor them inside of your um, OBS projects, this is great, because what this allows you to do is to be able to monitor the sources inside of OBS, without having additional loopback functions. So get your VB audio cable, preferably the A and B, and then get the audio monitor, the OBS audio monitor um, from obsproject.com, and then you're good to go. Okay, so now we're inside of OBS. I'm gonna quickly show you a couple of different settings that I really, this is how I've set it up, and this is the simplest way. So first and foremost, your Windows audio settings. If you right click and click sound settings, I have got my output set to my UMC 204, and I've got my input set to my Behringer, once again, the 204 HD. So this is recording my mic, and this is my main out for my speakers. So you wanna make sure your window settings are the same. I'm pretty sure this is gonna to apply to Mac as well, so just make sure you've got your interface set up as your in and out, as your main default device um, inside of your operating system. Next, what I wanna do, this is really, really important. Before you do anything else, you need to set up VB Audio Cable because I, I tripped up on this this week and it's caused a massive frustration. But if you go into in Windows, if you go into your C drive, your program files, and then if you go down to VB, and then you'll have your cable A and B, or if you've just got the, the free virtual audio cable you'll just have literally vb cable and if you click on here you've got this vb cable control panel by default the control panel here sets an internal sample rate of 96 kilohertz and i had, I had so much so many issues trying to get this resolved so go into your vb cable a and b 
you'll need this to do this both for both the A and B, or you need to do this for the standard cable and go into options and set your internal sampling rate to match the the sampling rate of your particular file. So in this instance, it's 48K. So I've got the input of 48K, okay? That is, I cannot stress, this is so important because if you don't do it, you'll have so many problems. It will ask you to do a reboot of your system. So if you're using the A and B, you'll need to do it on A, you need to do it on B, then reboot, and it will automatically update the sample rates for you. If you don't do this, you will get into so many problems. Now inside of Reaper, this is the way that I have done it because it's I've found this is the easiest way and it is the the way that puts less stress on your computer. So you're going to then need to send a feed out of your DAW. So in repo we go to options, preferences, and then we want to go to the device. So this is in audio and device. Now, I've tested many different options. It does not show as an ASIO driver, but I have found that wave out is the simplest way for me and it's the best or least taxing on my system the input device you need to set this as cable a so this is going to take the feed from reaper and this is going to send it to obs the output i have left as my speakers so it's the umc 204 and then the sample rate 24 bit to match the project and the sample rate to match the project the samples here I've set this to 512. You can set this. I've not really experimented with this. I think it defaults to 1024. I've set it to 512 because I know that that runs pretty well on my system. I haven't really kind of pushed it, so I've left it as it is and it works fine. So make sure wave out, cable A output, VB cable, your master outs, your speakers, so you can hear what's playing. And then you just want to change the sample rate here if it's not set to your um, sample rate of choice and then just change the samples. I've done 512 and this works for me. Click OK. Then what you need to do is you then need to go into OBS. For here, I've got a standard screen capture. So I've set up a scene by adding the screen capture and I've added a display capture so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And then the audio input capture. This is where you need to kind of set the feed in from Reaper or from your DAW. So you write, so you click on the little plus here, do audio input capture, and then you want the device to be the VB audio cable A. So this is matching the cable that we've set in Reaper. So we've set the Reaper input as A, and our output is coming through as A inside of the audio input source. Okay, so that is pretty much it. So if I now go into Reaper and play the track. And you can see the audio feed coming through on the desktop audio. So now let's take a look at how we do this inside of Studio One. So the process is very simple. We don't need to do too much here. If we've got this set up already in OBS, once it's set, it's set so you don't really need to do too much apart from going into studio one if we click on start and if we then go down to our audio device you'll see here i have selected windows audio and that is because if you then click on the windows audio click on the control panel you then get to choose the playback device and the recording device here the playback device i'm going to set to output one two and in the recording device, I'm going to set this to cable A output. So this is going to match the feed going into OBS. If I then click OK, close and OK. And if we then go back into our song, and if I then click here, start playing the song. We then have the feed going into OBS. So it is as simple as that. It's just a couple of pieces of software that you need to download. We haven't really covered the audio monitor. And the reason we haven't covered the audio monitor is we don't particularly need it in this instance. But if you were finding that you're putting the input into OBS and you couldn't hear it, you can add the audio monitor as a filter. So you don't need any really advanced routing. So if you literally just click on any of these, click filters, add, 
you'll then see you've got the audio monitor option. And then what you can then do is set it to the device that you want to hear, and then you'll be able to then monitor the feed inside of OBS as well. And the only other thing I just want to quickly mention is for anyone who's doing a live stream or a live feed, the only additional thing you're going to need to do is go into settings, and you'll then need to go into audio, and you want to set your monitoring device. This is going to send the feed out of OBS into YouTube or whatever you're using as your live streaming platform. So if you rather than set it to default, you'll then need to send this as an out. So if you then set cable a as an input, or you can do cable B. If I say, for instance, if I'm sending this out, I would probably choose cable B. And then what I want to do is then go into my streaming platform of choice and then set the mic in as the output of OBS. So you don't need to worry about doing anything else. So just set the advanced monitoring device as the input. And then inside of your streaming platform, you want to set the same number so if it's cable input a you use cable a you use cable input b you put b as the as the input inside of your streaming platform and that's literally going to pick up the feed from obs into your streaming platform it's as simple as that you don't need to do any advanced mic routing because the mic feed is going to go direct through obs and if you want to set this up once again go into your settings audio and to make sure your mic auxiliary audio here is set to the main input on your interface. So that's it for today's video. I hope you find this useful. It's been a bit of a head scratching, pull the hair out week this week, trying to get this all resolved. But once you've got this set up inside of OBS, it's done and dusted. You don't need to make any adjustments. All you need to do is just set the, the correct mic input inside of your DAW as the cable. It will send the feed through to OBS and you're good to go. So. If you know of another way of doing this, let me know in the comments down below. This is the most efficient way that I have found, but it's not to say it's the best way or the most efficient way. So if you get any alternative ways of doing this without having an interface that has loopback, then let me know in the comments down below. If you want to know more about digital mastering, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Make sure you tick that bell so you receive notifications and all of our videos moving forward. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Just want to give a big shout out to Aria over at IDDQD Sound. This track that I featured in today's video is the song Kurdistan Waltz. I had the privilege of mastering this track. So there'll be links in the description down below if you want to listen to the full song. And check out the IDDQD Sound YouTube channel. It is brilliant. What he does with Reaper is just mind-blowing. So check him out, showing some love. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and all that is left for me to say is I hope you'll keep safe and well and I'll see you in the next video coming real soon.